Hey folks, welcome to a thing, a thing. This is a, a thing. Anyway, this is my very first live coding session and what better way to start this off than to actually play some Tetris. Um, this is about Tetris, uh, but we're not going to be playing Tetris because I'm not good at Tetris. But for the last year and a half, I have begun become fascinated with NES Tetris, the uh, competitive scene, and that's a bit too loud for my taste. What is it? It's Tetris. Um, there's not much to it. I'm going to play level 18 here to show you how terrible I am. But I mean, the idea is to score. Whoops. Oh, now I'm. So why do I care about Tetris? And what does this have to do with live coding? Well, oh boy. Okay, forget it. Um, people play this game and they get like ridiculous high scores and I'm not even close to that, but I like it and I'd like to practice it. Uh, let's try again. Uh, and the thing is, you can play it and you can the idea is, is to keep track of your high scores so that you can tell people how great and awesome you are. Uh, here we go. Okay. Um, but I was thinking that probably gets a little tedious because you got to keep... I was thinking, you know what, as I practice more, I'll keep a spreadsheet or something and with all of my data... And that's probably gonna take a lot of effort. What do I save? What if I forget to save? Whoa, oh shoot. You know, on these high speeds, you make one mistake and you're dead. Anyway. <laughs> uh, now, I could take a screenshot. Why did I take a screenshot? The idea is that I would like to create a program to take Tetris screens like this and extract all of the necessary information and save it and to a file or hard drive or maybe in the future I can create a, a web service in the cloud that accepts these things and this can store it into um, some, some type of database online. But the idea is that I could play Tetris and I could take a screenshot. It, my program would read all the necessary bits, extract the information out, save it so I don't have to think about it. I can just hit a button and start playing again. And that's the idea. And I thought, I don't know, why don't I just create it? Because that's the cool part about whoops, being a software developer that I can actually create something like that. Now I have no clue how to do this and I am not going to do this in one sitting. I'm going to try and do this in hour-long sessions and I'm thinking it might take maybe three or four sessions to actually create a, a data extractor for this program. Uh, for, sorry, for this screen. Uh, so what am I going to do? Well, I have a picture. A uh, picture with a bunch of numbers on it. The problem is how do you turn those images into an actual number? And that's where we're gonna have to do some Googling. Um, I already did some preliminary things. Um, you know what, just one second. I wanna make sure. Uh, yeah. I just want to make sure I'm recording my audio because I've done that before and made that mistake. Anyway, let's get out of this. Um, come on, let's get out of this. <laughs> okay, uh, what am I going to do? Like, let's, let's do this. So, come on, Internet, let's go. All right, so the idea is, 
<sighs> we're going to do some OCR. And OCR stands for Optical Character Recognition. Um, it's the electro... Uh, there we go. Uh, it's the electronical or mechanical conversion of images of typed, handwritten, or printed text into a machine-coded text, whether from a scanned document, a photo of a document, a scene photo, or from subtitle text superimposed on an image. So this is the thing that will take text from an image and store it as text. And that's easier said than done. I am not about to do this myself. Um, and... I don't have to because other people do it for me. So there is something out there called, I think, tes Tesseract. Let's look at that. Uh, here we go. So this is an open source piece of software. It's uh, <clears throat> various operating systems. It's free. Everything's great about it. Um, in 2006, it was considered one of the most accurate open source OCR engines then available. I have looked, I have not found anything different, even though 2006 was a lifetime ago. Um, there's not much to recognizing text. And as long as your text is quite decently formatted, I can see this being okay. Excuse me while I adjust my mic. All right, so um, how am I going to make this? <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. Uh, but thanks for joining me. If you know anything about programming, um, you might be able to um, think of better ways than what I'm about to do. Uh, if you don't know anything about programming, I hope you don't get lost. Um, but one of the neat things about all this streaming stuff, and I'm just learning how to stream stream things. I'm not very good at it yet. Uh, but it, it lets you see my thought process. And I wish I knew about this stuff when I was going through university and trying to figure out what I wanted to do as a career. Um, it would have really helped me probably make a decision about being a software developer much earlier on um, in my career than what I did. I went and tried to be a math teacher first and that failed but um, because I had no idea what software developers did and you know I'm not gonna say that what I'm about to do is gonna be super awesome here but um, it does give uh, insight into someone who has no idea what it what it takes to make a program or a tool of any kind. It, it might give a little more understanding about how we actually accomplish this. So uh, here we go. I am going to first. I mean, the first thing you have to do is is figure out what what programming language do you want to use, and there are several. Um, several things that go into deciding which one to use. You know, what operating system do you want to run it on? How proficient are you in the language? Does it actually do what you want? How much have others done before you that you can reuse? Because we don't build everything from scratch. So um, basically, um, if ever I want to do something cool without having to learn a new language, I choose the .NET environment, specifically C Sharp, because that's what I'm used to. I can write it quick, I can write it fast, I don't have to learn syntax. I can just do what it is I do. Now it's probably not the best thing. I think a lot of people would say, no, you have to use Python, because Python has many awesome OCR libraries and it's uh, cross-platform and it's instantaneous and everything about it is awesome and that all may be true but the one not awesome thing about it is I don't write code in Python uh, I did one assignment in university where I did elliptic curve crypt, crypto, uh, cryptographic system 
uh, as part of my cryptography course. That was an uh, interesting experience. But I'm not proficient in Python. And I want to uh, not have to learn a new language. So uh, .NET is a very mature, mature system. Uh, what am I doing here? So we'll open up Visual Studio here. .NET is Microsoft's offering to the software developer. It's a system of um, a system of programming languages, C Sharp, F Sharp, unfortunately Visual Basic, VB.NET, which I think they're getting rid of um, pretty soon. But anyway. Uh, why do I like it? Because I, I mean, I use it in my regular job, but it also is cross-platform now. Microsoft has um, made a deal with the enemy, and <laughs> uh, you can run .NET programs in Linux environments and, and all sorts of other things. And so that's what we're going to do. Okay, so uh, let's start out by creating a new project. And we are going to create a console.net core app. And this is going to be what the, the hardest thing ever about interesting. My uh, Just watching my stream here. I'm still so nervous about streaming things live. Things seem choppy. Hopefully that doesn't happen. That's not in the final product. Okay, anyway, regardless of all that, let's do this. What is this calling? This is called Tetris Data. Uh, Tetris, Tetris Screen Extractor. Eh. Tetris Data extractor there we go tetris data extractor create super important coming up with the right name um, so the idea is is that i want to take a single image of the final ending sequence of a tetris game and extract all the necessary components now i have screenshots here so here's one here, here we go. That is an ending, ending thing. Now, the important pieces of information here that I want to save are, uh, I don't really care about A type. A type and B type are two different things. A type is when you're actually playing a game from scratch. B type is they give you a bunch of garbage and you're given a certain number of lines to clean it up or you have to survive for a certain number of lines. Anyway, it's dumb, nobody does it and I'm gonna just forget about it. So everything's gonna be A type. I don't have to save that. Um, so the lines up here I wanna save, the score I want to save. Top is just the top score um, that you achieved in that session uh, without turning off your Nintendo. Um, I want to save the level and I want to save all the piece counts. Now the important thing in Tetris is the number of line bo long bars you get. Um, generally, if you don't get very many, you don't get a very high score because to get a Tetris, that is to clear four lines at once with a long bar is the most efficient way to get points. But um, that is... Um, Anyway, regardless, uh, we will save the rest of them too. So this is called a T. Uh, this one is called a J. This is called a, a, a Z, but you know, here in Canada, we'll pronounce it Z. This is a, a square or an O piece. This is an S, this is an L, and this is your long bar. So that's the information we want to extract from this. But I mean, come on, how, how are we gonna do that? Right now, if I click run here, I get, it compiles, 
wait for it and wait for it <laughs> hello world okay that's great um, there we got that without doing anything uh, the uh, the kind of thing here is that we're gonna use um, Tesseract OCR engine and somebody wrote a wrapper for it for, for .NET and so we're going to just going to use that. Hopefully that's a thing. But uh, for the first thing we're going to do is we're going to need to. Whoa, whoa. Come on. We're going to need to create our models. Uh, so these are going to be. Uh, oh, I can't spell today. Okay, this is going to be our, our class that will encapsulate the data. So this is going to be called uh, data, Tetris data, oh you know it. And I still want to change the name, Tetris data model. Yes. So let's go. This is Tetris data model. Now, uh, looking at our, where's my, where's my screen here? Here's my screen. Let's make this smaller. So I'm going to have num score. And score is an integer. That means it's a number without uh, decimal places. Um, I'm going to have a level that I got to. And what else do I have? I have lines. I have lines. So this is for our lines. These gets and sets, these just mean that um, these are properties and not actual variables. Um, you could do fancy things with them, but this is your get and set methods for this property. It's just, it's kind of a philosophical difference between a property and a variable. It doesn't matter. These are just things going to store information for me. So uh, we're going to have the T. T. T number. Gerser. What came next? The J. J number. Okay. Uh, then I have a Z. O and S said O and S. Okay. Uh, then I have an L. L number and we can call this I number you know I could call it a long bar but then it's not really it's kind of a different format some people do call this an I bar an I I piece um, I mean the thing is we can change these things if we want to later on. Anyway, that encapsulates all the data. I want to take a picture and I want to turn it into these numbers. So that's that's great. Um, but to do that, I need to get the Tesseract engine. 
And if I, I did a search here before for Tesseract, Tesseract, NuGet C Sharp. NuGet packages are just packages that people make. Um, and they, you can add them to your project in Visual Studio and it gives you the ability to use their code. You don't get to look at their source code, but they it includes the compiled DLL files. So, uh, yeah, let's. Uh, this tells me it's called Tesseract. Um, so I should be able to. This was last updated in December sixteenth, and you know the cool thing about this is you could go to. You could go to GitHub. And because it's open source, the, the code is here for you to see. So we could actually look at the source code for this, but we don't really care uh, because we're, we're sure that they did it correctly. Uh, and we're just going to use it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into here and I'm going to add this as a NuGet package. Kill that. So we're going to browse. And we're going to go Tesseract and see if it's there, see if it comes up. Hmm. Huh. That's different. That's not the same one. We can click this to go to this one. C-sharp wrapper for Tesseract 5. This looks like an even better package. Oh, but there's only been 15 commits. And it's just done like this year. And this is a this is a sample program. I'm not Not really sure I want to use this. This doesn't look, look like it's very uh, mature. But how come there's none? That's hilarious. That's the one. Tesseract. Okay, here we go. Tesseract. Uh, we can install whatever version we want, but why wouldn't we install the latest? So that other version I was looking f looking at was actually spelled with an. I spelled it with an A. Anyway, whatever. Uh, you can see that this one that we're going to use, uh, if I go back to it uh, here, it's got 300 commits, 18 contributors, 14 releases. This is the one I want. I, I think this is going to be going to be better for us. So this is what it needs to uh, install to get this working. We're just going to accept all that. Whoops, we can minimize that. Come on. Oh, my word. OK, so now we have Tesseract here. We also have this x86 and x64 DLL directories. So that's interesting. Okay, that's fine. Uh, now, let's actually go ahead and before I do anything else, we're going to add this to source control. Uh, 
Tetris Data Extractor. Uh, get in it. Okay, now I have a Bitbucket, a Bitbucket account. This is just so I can save all of my changes and um, I don't lose anything. I can roll back to previous versions. Source control is a fantastic thing. Uh, I'm going to create a new repository. This is called Tetris. Come on. Tetris Data Extractor. Extractor. Uh, we're not going to make it public just yet. You must either select a project or create one. Create new project. I'm a little bit confused. This is something new. Since the last time I created a new repository in Bitbucket. Okay. I'm going to. This is everything I've I've uh, I have. Do I have a? No, I need a VS. Get ignore. One second. You're thinking, oh my goodness, what are you doing? This is just boilerplate startup code stuff. Uh, Actually, I think I have one in my, this one. There's my git ignore file. This file just uh, gives you patterns for files that are not going to be source controlled. And we certainly don't want a bunch of stuff to be source controlled. So here we're going to go. Um, actually, can I just download this? Just let me download it. Save. Perfect. Now I have a git. Uh... Now it's a git ignore.txt file. Oh my word. Windows is not very fun. Because it, uh, oh no, okay, so get status, perfect, it did accept it, oops, okay, we're going to make a new commit, initial commit, oh, can tell I haven't done any. Um, any development since I last formatted. So it wants to know my username and it wants to know my name. Okay, so uh, now I've got Git set up. Now I can, so these are all new files. Now I can commit them. Oh my word. Initial commit. Good, now I can push up. 
to Bitbucket. Excellent. Good, now I go to Bitbucket here and I go to Repositories and I can go to Tetris Data Extractor and I should be able to see Oh, come on. <laughs> My computer doesn't like to stream and do things at the same time. Here we go, Tetris Data Extractor. Okay, that's fine. We don't have to deal with that anymore. Now that we have this, uh, we are going to try and see what happens. So I think first of all, uh, we need to be able to just test the OCR capabilities of this package. And to do that, we're going to uh, take the Tetris image and crop it. So let's do that. I'm going to edit it. And crop and rotate. How do I even do this? Oh, here we go. Okay, so let's get the score here. Let's go all the way up here and get the score. Now, the idea being that this, come on. Oh, it doesn't like a really small aspect ratio. This is really dumb. Good old paint. Okay. And I'm going to crop it. And this is my score. Now I'm going to save this. And I think it needs to be a bitmap. I'm not too sure, but that seems to be the safest thing. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to actually. This is my program. I'm going to say uh, file equals. Now, how did this? Uh, how did we? How did this say to use it? There was. Uh, you also need to download Tesseract OCR. Well, that's fine. I don't really care about that. I want to see a working example here. Console demo program.cs. So this uses a TIFF file, creates a new engine. loads from file. That's what we'll do. Okay, so I am going to add an existing item. Oh, I didn't even save it, did I? Let's 
let's just save it in pictures and we'll just call this Tetris now we'll use a TIFF file as well I'm not sure if we need to use a TIFF file but the uh, the demo the documentation uses a, a TIFF file so we will follow suit okay so now we will add an existing item all files there's my Tetris so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click it and say hey this is uh, this is actual content and I and I'd like I'd like you to copy always actually I don't think this needs to be content never mind uh, okay We'll save that. So now I should be able to just give it a, we're just going to call it Tetris.tif. That's all we're going to do. Boom. Um, Okay, I'm not going to duplicate everything, but apparently this is how you do it. You create a new Tesseract engine, um, and it's pulling in suggestions for me because uh, I've added the package. Let's, let's increase the size of my, of my code here. Okay, so uh, I have to pass in some parameters. The data path. The path to the parent directory that contains the test data directory. Huh. See, in the, in the, the sample here, they have test data. And so if I actually go to the test data, trained data, what is this? It's 3.92 megs. Hmm. Okay, well, let's not worry too much about it. We'll uh, we'll create the test data. The test data method uh, folder. I'm going to give it that, and then we'll just assume that uh, it's all okay. Test data. Uh, with a lowercase d. So the next thing I have to give it is a language. Engine mode. Uh, what? Creates, uh, for example, eng for English. Okay. Okay, so now I have this engine. And um, according to the demo, if I go back to the console demo, nope, not that, this engine mode default. They want an engine mode default, so there's an over overridden constructor here. Uh, the engine mode value to use when initializing the Tesseract engine. I'm sure it defaults to default. I guess it. Um, there's different ways it can read an image. Uh, so, okay. This is the default. Uh, okay. And then it looks like the Tesseract engine... 
uses a certain file type, a PIX file type. Let's uh, get back here. Um, so PIX.load from file, and then we're going to give it the file that I'm loading from. Uh, okay, that's fine. And now we do this and we're going to call the process method on the image. Okay. Um, and then we're going to text equals page dot get text. Now, could it really be this simple? I mean, this is nowhere near where we want to be, but this is the first, the first step. So what I'm going to say is console dot write line text. Okay. Um, so this will open up the Tetris picture and it will convert it to this PIX format, which the Tesseract engine will process get the text and then we're going to output the text. I, I don't expect this to actually work um, because I think I need to download the data. But let's just see what happens just for kicks. So it says it failed to initialize the Tesseract engine. Um, there was an error. Well, what's the error? Failed to initialize. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, and I, I expected it to fail because we don't have the data that it's learned. So go back to here. Um, Go back to the sample project. Uh, actually, no. Samples, we're going to open this up. The actual package itself. It says I need to download language data files from here. So we'll go here. And I have to download language files from this repository. OK. Uh huh. Here's this test. I don't understand what I'm supposed to do. This says you will need to download the language data files from Tesseract OCR. Download language data files from the test data repository. All right, then let's download it. Wow, that's big. Well, that's huge. That's over 140 megs now. What on earth is happening?
How big does this go? So my thought is that if you, the program will read the pixels of the image, but it won't be able to know what text it is if it doesn't know what language to convert it into. Um, okay, 473 megs. That is ridiculous. So somewhere in this f file, uh, English. So these are all English files. Let's copy them all. Let's go to here and let's add them. Uh, uh, let's just do it this way. Actually, can I just paste them? No, I think I have to extract them first. So I think what I'll do is I'll just copy them from here and I'll do this manually. Go to my source here. My Tetris data extractor. Uh, there's my test data and we'll throw them in there. It'll extract them. They're huge. I guess it was all languages. So whatever all this stuff is, this is kind of crazy. But okay, now that uh, now that we have data in here, let's. I guess um, these all have to. We want to copy always. We'll save that. I just want to make sure. So you can actually see them. This is. This looks like hexadecimal values. I'm not sure what that is. Fold, like word frequency. That's probably too big to show. Anyway, um, yeah, no. Regardless, we have the data. Now let's let's try. Now that we have the data. Let's see if we can't get some some actual results. Huh. Oh, well, we got some actual results. Um, question mark, question mark, T E dash question mark question mark question mark question mark T E that is certainly um, not what I had in mind so that didn't work Let me just step through this and see what happens. So we create the new engine and We've got the image now. It does have a a width and a height, 272 by 42. Is that the, yeah, that's, that sounds about right. Page, okay. Huh. 
So get the text. And then the text is, see now it's something totally different. FLF. It's probably too small for you guys to see. Well, that was very disappointing. Yes, it was. Because if I run it again, we're going to get, yeah, this whole nonsense. I'm not sure what's happening. Did I not do something? I mean, obviously. Obviously, I didn't do something properly. Uh, let's go back to the demo. So, this is the photo that the demo uses. This is a lot of 12 point text to test the OCR code and see if it works on all types of file format. That's kind of the same with our stuff, unless, unless, see that was black text on white background. Maybe that is the issue. Let's go back to the program. So what this shows is that they started, they got the text and then they created an iterator. Okay, let's go back to Visual Studio and I want to see what it is this get text method is supposed to do. What is there? Get the page's content as plain text. Well, Creates that is used to iterate over the page is defined by the okay. Let's I'm just wondering if my text being light on dark is the issue. So let's use some paint brushes. Let's do it. Um, first I'll make these zeros orange. Then I'll make the black white. And then I'll make everything dark. See, you didn't know you were signing up for this, did you? Super, super paint skills. Okay, now let's save this. Whoa, that got saved, I am sure. Okay, so now I got black text on a white background. Maybe that changes the data. That would be unfortunate. No, that did nothing. That did nothing. Hmm. Well, let's, uh, Let's do all of this. 
I don't want the catch. They're using a try up there, so let's take this. Okay, we'll uh, use their exact code. Nope, not the picture. And we'll paste their code here. So now we've pasted their code. This becomes file. Uh, this, we can just do this. Okay. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I have, uh, I'm not sure, maybe, so I'm going to control Z this just, well, that was, that was pointless. Why doesn't that work? Improve the quality of the image you are giving Tesseract. Uh -huh. Okay, let's try something else. Um, I'm going to control Y this now to get back their data or their code. Okay. Um, this time though, come on, copy all this, bring it here. Uh, this time instead of Tetris, let's actually use their file. Maybe something. What does that do? Huh. Okay, the sample source, this one. Oh, I, I downloaded it here. It's probably in my downloads folder. Yeah, photo test. There it is. Let's add this. problem is I, I wanted this to be a small little utility and the issue is if I have to lug around 50 megs of language data like I don't want to do that just copy that to the output directory and okay instead of Tetris let's do photo test so this is their image, their code. Let's see what happens. This is a lot of 12 point text to test the core code. 
and see if it works on all types of file format. Oh my word, it doesn't even really work that well. It missed the... This is pathetic. OCR code. To test the OCR code, and, and this says to test the COR code. Well, that... How is that useful? That's not useful. Okay. Well, this session is a bust. My... My thought was that this was going to be a, a fairly simple thing to use, but it doesn't even do their sample correctly. So I'm not going to waste my time trying to get it to read Tetris data. So I'm going to, we'll have to stop it here because we're already over the hour, hour long session. Um, and next week we'll do another another session and throughout the week I'm going to start thinking about different ways that this can this can go down because the idea is is that this looks like a training system for text that is supposed to be able to recognize any kind of character for any kind of language and actually all we care about are digits and numbers and they're always going to be the same format and look the same because it's the Tetris screen and it doesn't change so I think what I'm going to do and what I might do I'm going to think of some ideas but I think this might come down to extracting individual digits and comparing them to known digits based on images that we have stored for the digits 0 through 9. I think that's probably what's going to end up happening, but we'll see. This is, um, this is what software development is all about. We just spent an hour going down a path, and I'm going to put a stop to it because it's not doing what I want it to do. So let's try something else next time. Thanks for joining me, though. This, is, uh, this has been fun, and we're going to do this. I promise you this is going to be a thing. So uh, we'll call it a day, end it there. Have a good day. Have a good week. We'll see you next time.